So you're new to homeschool. What do you do? How do you start? These are my tips that I'm going to share with you today. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Amanda. Welcome to our little path. Here we discuss our journey on motherhood and homeschooling and with a Catholic Christian influence. So sharing a little bit about if you are new to homeschooling today, if you like homeschooling content, motherhood content, um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to join me. Also, let me know in the comments below, are you new to homeschooling? Are you just trying to get started with your new year and wanting some tips? Let me know in the comments below. This will be our fifth year homeschooling. So we're not new to it, but I still take these tips when we're starting back up from a break as well. You are starting homeschooling. It can be so overwhelming and just feel like there's a lot of weight and pressure on your shoulders, right? As a mom. And if you've never homeschooled before, I come from a, I was in public school until eighth grade and then I went to a private high school so I really never had any homeschooling experience my husband was homeschooled for a year I believe um, yeah just one year I think his sixth grade year he was homeschooled um, so he was homeschooled for one year so he kind of like knew a little bit about it but we really didn't have any personal experience um, a whole lot in detail with homeschooling so it was a new journey for us. And I know I remember starting and feeling very overwhelmed. Where do I go? I did talk to a few homeschooling mom friends that I had when we first started and they helped. Um, but I think overall just jumping in and <laughs> figuring out what works the whole first year, just kind of use it as your, I don't want to say trial year, but like, you know, it, there's a learning curve for everything. So your first year, give yourself a lot of grace. That's what I would say. I wouldn't call it your trial year, but make it your grace year um, because you're gonna find what works best for you, what works best for your kiddos, and what works best for your family. Some people really like, have super structured homeschools, and some people are a lot more laid back, and we're kind of in between that. So um, it took us a good probably two to three years to really like, feel like, okay, I've got this. I know what works well for my kids. I know what works well for me and like how we kind of blend those together. So take your first year, make it your grace year. Promise you, you won't regret it. But with that being said, I know that it's hard to get started and you're kind of got all this new curriculum, you've bought it all and you're like, great, let's go. <laughs> what do you do? Do you start every subject on day one or do you ease into it my recommendation um might cause waves i don't know um but i'm gonna give you my recommendations i have five tips and then kind of like a bonus tip it's not always the easiest tip so that's why i'm using it as a bonus <laughs> if that makes any sense you'll see at the end of this at the end of the video so my first tip is to start slow you heard me. You got all this new curriculum. You're excited to jump into it. Maybe your kid's also excited to jump into it too. But don't do everything at once because that's a quick way to run into overwhelm, burnout, and maybe feeling like, what did I get myself into? So I would say start with one to two subjects and build from there. Your first week, maybe just do like a few extra crafts on top of those one to two subjects. Or if you signed up for subscription boxes, just do your subscription box that week. Um, take it really slow and um, give yourself grace, I guess. <laughs> I think that it should take about a month to get yourself acclimated into your routine because what you might try in the first few weeks might not end up being a routine that works for you. So you take that first month and kind of see how the day goes and how the flow goes. And then you can go and say, oh, you know what? We started at nine, but you know what? The kids wake up super early, so we can actually start a little bit earlier and maybe be done with our day. 
Or, you know what, we all sleep in, so why do I feel like I need to start at nine o'clock when we just woke up at eight o'clock? Let's start right before lunch, maybe at 10, 30, 11, and then we can work a little bit more into the afternoon. Every family is different, and you'll kind of find what works best for you. Um, so yeah, I would say start slow. Also, let's say it's the middle of the school year, and I know some families do pull their kids out in the middle of the school year. They reevaluate after the holidays, or um, you know, something's going on in public school and you've just decided, you know what, we're done, we're pulling out, take a break, de-school. You'll hear this a lot if you're in homeschooling communities, but like if you've pulled your kids out of school, de-schooling is a great way to kind of bridge that transition into homeschooling. So go out, take field trips, go to the library, do no real curriculum. And I mean it, do no real curriculum, just relax, let your kid come down off of school and like in the classroom setting and know that like home is going to be like that safe space and it's going to be a lot more geared towards what the kid likes, what they want and a little bit more gentler approach focused just on that one child instead of sharing their learning with 30 other students. So field trips, hiking, go out to the park, go to the library, um, play a lot of board games, maybe just buy a couple educational board games. There are fun ones, I promise you. <laughs> if I don't have a video, I will be making a video. I can't remember if I've done a board game one recently. I need to do an updated one. Um, but yeah, I would say just de-school and relax into that transition and maybe you didn't pull your kid out in the middle of the year, so you've had all of summer to kind of relax and do that, and now you're starting fresh here in August, September time. And that's perfect. It's a great way to kind of go into that first month and start really slow. My second tip for starting homeschooling is to read. And that doesn't necessarily mean that mom's the one doing the read aloud. Listen to podcasts, listen to audiobooks. You can read with your ears as well. Um, pick a chapter book and yes even like kindergarten first grade can listen to some simple chapter books some of our favorite chapter books at that age were the magic treehouse books my kids loved them super exciting and engaging we also did little house on the prairie I think for first grade for Isabella maybe and we loved it and the kids loved it and they stayed super engaged throughout the whole little house series so it doesn't have to just be picture books. Picture books are great to start out with your morning or to tie in to whatever you're learning in a lesson that day, but also maybe pick a family read aloud um, that you guys can do together, whether it's to read before you start your school day, to read at lunchtime, or if you have the audio version, you can listen to it too, together in the car, just reading good books is a great way to kind of ease into your homeschooling journey and kind of start to create good readers for your kids. I would also say, um, I know like if you read or watch a lot of like homeschooling content, they will say, oh, do poetry tea time, do um, classical music and things like that. And we still have not found a way to like include poetry tea time. I think maybe I've just never like made it a priority, but what I have done is just add poems to our morning time. Um, and so a part of our morning reading along with our read aloud is I'll just read a poem or two a day. Um, sometimes it's even just been like rhymes, um, like good traditional rhymes and things like that. But just kind of exposing the kids slowly to that has been, um, really fun and then the kids can kind of start to appreciate it and I've seen now five years in how they kind of pick up on some of the poetry stuff without technically teaching poetry or having like a set poetry tea time don't feel like you need to do poetry tea time people you don't <laughs> maybe one day we will I'm not opposed to it I just have never made it work in our house <laughs> poetry in the morning time reading totally fine I can handle that one and the last one is like I said at the beginning of reading is podcasts. My kids love podcasts and sometimes that's like 
great reward during homeschool, like after your homeschooling is finished, or you don't want to quite pull your kids out of that like learning mode, but maybe it's lunchtime or something like that. I will put on a podcast to kind of keep them still in that like processing mode because when you're listening to a podcast, they still need to like listen and process and all of that. And so the podcast can kind of like be a nice little bridge depending on how long it is. Um, so I'll list a few of my favorites below. We really love the Purple Rocket podcast. A new app that we've been using this year is Pinna and it's got a lot of short like five, 10 minute stuff, which is really great. Um, and I'll link the rest that we have below. One of the, some of the Catholic um, Shining Light series, those ones, I forget the name of it. I'll post it below. Um, ooh, Saint Stories for Kids. See, look at they're all just popping in my head now. <laughs> Can't process this all. Um, but yeah, podcasts are great. We definitely love those. If your kids maybe aren't into audiobooks just yet, podcasts are a shorter chunk that you can do that. But also don't expect your kids when you're listening to podcasts or you even personally are reading aloud for them to just sit and listen, right? Like kids are not built for that. So give them some magnetiles, give them some Play-Doh, give them some Legos, something to keep their hands busy or they can color or draw what you're reading about. Maybe pick something in the story and draw it while you're reading to keep them engaged but listening. Um, so if you could see the rest of my table right now, I have morning magnetiles. I have a magnetile garage built on our um, table right now because Ben was doing magnetiles while I was reading this morning and I haven't taken it down because it will be the end of the world if mom takes down the magnetiles. He has to do it. So yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you all can relate to that. The magnetiles are still sitting up. Maybe I'll flash a picture in here if I remember to do that. My third tip is to keep your expectations low. Like I said, it's a year of grace. It's going to be a transition. It could be a great smooth transition, but it's not always a great smooth transition for everyone. So don't feel like you're alone because it wasn't a smooth transition for us until like year two, two and a half. <laughs> so you're not alone, but it's a transition for mom to kind of get into the rhythm of of school and it's also a transition for the kids whether they've been in like brick and mortar school or the you've started from the beginning um so set your expectations low don't feel like you have to have it perfect because you won't and give yourself grace and give your kids grace and then say you're sorry if you get frustrated because i get frustrated and i'm sure you do too and saying sorry helps not only model the behavior, but, um, you know, can help repair when there's a stress. <laughs> so yeah, take it slow. I also had a fella who went to brick and mortar school for kindergarten and then we pulled her out for first grade. And I'm not kidding you, the entire year of first grade, she asked why she wasn't going back to school. We'd had many discussions. She never said she necessarily wanted to go back to school, but she was like, why am I not in school? Why aren't we doing this? Like my, I had friends in there, blah, blah, blah. Like all those kinds of things. And you know, I talked to her and let her know what our reasonings were for homeschooling. And we just kind of processed it together. And then by year two, she was like, oh, this is fine. I get it. Like I would much rather you know, be done with school in an hour and a half than be in a classroom for seven, eight hours a day. And even now at fifth grade, she's like, I don't want to go back to school. She might not want to do the work that day. And I don't threaten to send my kids back to school because it's an empty threat. So I don't believe in doing that. But I do like to remind her like, well, you could be in school for seven or eight hours and then come home and still have to do homework. Or you could spend, you know, an hour doing your self studies and then be done. That usually does the trick. <laughs> so again, just setting your expectations low will help that transition. And you aren't alone if the transition is tougher than you think it is. Because I'm guarantee someone has been in 
in a tough transition too. And they've made it through. If you decide homeschooling is not for you, that's okay too, right? Like you kind of take that first year to see how it goes. My fourth tip would be to utilize your library. Before we had ESA with Arizona, it was really hard to staunch that desire to like buy every book. But once I like really got the hang of requesting online for different books from the library, it became so much easier. And I feel like more um, resources for the kids opened up when I was able to request from the library. Just going into the library each week and letting your kids pick out books for every two weeks. Um, but also requesting things that might supplement the curriculum that you're learning or the topics that you're discussing in your curriculum. Being able to request it online. I think most libraries nowadays have things like that. Um, and also like audiobooks. Audiobooks, we get all of our audiobooks on Hoopla or on Libby. I know some people really like Audible, but I didn't want to pay for it. So <laughs> we just get ours from the library and it works out great. I have a four-year-old. Come here. You want to show him what you look like? Is that dad's sunglasses or are those yours? No. Oh, are those mom's sunglasses? No. Yes. I don't know who's there. Go ahead, put it on. You can show the camera. They're in quiet time right now, and so we're dressing up. All right. Thank you. My fifth tip is to play games. So that would be board games, card games, um, just regular games. They don't have to be educational. Um. I feel like when we have tough days on school, if we pull out a board game, it almost always fixes, or a card game, it fixes everyone's attitude and it just kind of takes the stress. Sometimes we'll just scrap a whole lesson in math and play math games. Or, um, you know, when it comes to like starting into our social studies, we will pull out one of our like social studies geared games and do that. And yeah, I think it's just a fun way to add variety to your homeschool and not make it so dry. A lot of people um, promote like the game schooling and I think we do lean very more on like the game schooling level of teaching through fun, right? It's a simple recommendation, but I think if you can invest in some good games, definitely go that route. You will be uh, thanking yourself when you have a tough day and you need to switch things up, just play a board game. All right, and my last suggestion is like a bonus suggestion, and that is yeah. finding a community to support yourself. If you are the only one that you know who homeschools, maybe go to your church and put an announcement in the bulletin or ask your priest or pastor to, uh, if he knows of any homeschooling families that they can connect you with. Um, having resources in person is really great, but also I've found that you can find a lot of support and resources on the online community. Hence one of the reasons why I do YouTube is because I found a lot of support in YouTube videos and content creators for homeschooling, but also on Instagram as well. And even now we, I have been connected through like a couple different homeschooling like Facebook groups. So I know not everyone is super into all the social media avenues, but find something that works for you. Facebook groups, different YouTubers. I am happy to answer all kinds of questions on YouTube. If you need it for support, I am here for you. Or come over to my Instagram and you can DM me if you have questions or concerns or just need to vent or rant. I am happy. <laughs> I'm happy to be that person because um, I really think that homeschooling is such a gift. And even though it's a gift, it's a hard one sometimes. Um, it can be really beautiful, but like also, you know, as a mom, it can be hard as well. So it's not always fairies and roses over here. And I just want you to know that you're doing great. New to homeschooling, I hope that these tips helped you. You found maybe some new tips or just some guidance on how to jump in, AKA don't jump in, go slow. <laughs> but yeah, I know that my first year was up and down and that's okay. That's normal. 
trying to figure out a new lifestyle and that's fine. Um, you will get through it and you will find what works best for your family. I hope that you guys have a great day. I look forward to seeing you in my next videos. Catch you later. Bye.